Thanks for watching this video. This is Mr. Pritchard. Today our objective is to learn how to find sentences without agreement errors. I will show you four sentences at a time and our task is to find the one without agreement errors. We're talking about subject verb agreement and pronoun antecedent agreement. In sentence number one, we have, uh, we have the most basic agreement error and this is where the verb is singular but the uh, subject is, pl is uh, sorry, the verb is plural, but the subject is singular. So Lupe is the subject. Lupe is the person who wants to learn how to line dance. Lupe is singular, and, but the problem is this verb doesn't end in S. Now, for the most part, singular verbs end in S. This should say Lupe wants to learn how to line dance. So that's the problem with the first one. In sentence number, uh, in sentence B, uh, Beth, along with Greg and Maria, are planning a backpacking trip. This one might sound okay to you, but it actually has uh, a very common problem. Uh, one of the rules about agreement is that a phrase or a clause after a subject usually will not determine the number of people, places, or things a sentence is about. Along with Greg and Maria is a prepositional phrase. So when you see a prepositional phrase like this, you should try to take it out of the sentence and see if the sentence still works. Beth are planning a backpack trip. That's not correct. This should be is. Is is the singular verb. Is is what we want. Beth is planning a backpacking trip. So that one's wrong. C. How many dreidels does Miriam need to buy for Hanukkah? This sentence is confusing because it's a question. Questions sometimes will have subjects after verbs. So when you see a question mark, you should be suspicious. What you're looking for is the verb and the person, place, or thing doing that verb. So the verb is does need. Does need. The, the subject will be the person who does need uh, to buy, in this case, dreidels. So you might think that the dreidels is the subject, but it's actually Miriam. Miriam needs to buy the dreidels for Hanukkah. So Miriam is the subject. The verb they use is does need. Does does end in an S. So this one looks pretty good. I like answer C. But let's check D. Two of Europe's active volcanoes, Etna and Stromboli, is in Italy. Well, this is wrong. Two is plural. Is ends in S. Is is um, a singular verb. We want the plural verb. So the answer is C. All right, sentence number two. This has some indefinite pronouns in it. Um, so some. The word some um, is either singular or plural um, based on a list. And here is the, the list that some deals with. So whenever you use the word some, it is either singular or plural depending on how it's used. When you see the word some, you have to sort of investigate the sentence. You have to keep reading. This says some of the furniture. Some will be singular or plural based on whatever prepositional phrase um, some is about. Furniture is singular. So in this case, some is singular. So we want a verb that ends in S, a singular verb. Some of the furniture in the Ming Dynasty exhibits are lovely. Are is uh, not a singular subject. So this should say is. Now that probably sounds funny to you, um, but some of the furniture is lovely, lovely is the correct answer. All right, B. They use the word both, and both is an indefinite pronoun as well. And both is a part of this list. These words are always plural. This means we're going to want a verb that does not end in S. So both my sister and my brother are learning sign language. This is our verb. It doesn't end in S. So this one looks like a good answer, B. Let's look at C. Most. Most is on this list. And this is the singular or plural list. So we don't know. We have to keep reading the sentence. Most of the members 
So we're talking about members, so that's plural. So we want a verb that does not end in S. Most of the members of the family is. That's incorrect. This should be most are from Ireland. And then there's D. We have the word each. Each is on this list. Now this list is so big, I don't even know if it fits on the screen entirely. But the word each is on it, and this is the singular list. So each needs to be singular, which means a verb that ends in S. Each of the cars on the lot run smoothly. Well, the, the, sub, the verb should have an S, so it should be um, each, uh, does each of the cars on the lot run smoothly. It's actually do here that needs to have the S. It should say does each. That might sound funny, but it is correct. So um, the answer to this uh, question is the letter B. All right, in the third sentence uh, set, we have Gary's cousins or his mother. This is a subject that is joined by the word or. The rule on this is that the verb, in this case the word helps, will agree with the subject closest to it. So the word mother is closer to helps than Gary's cousins. His mother is singular, so this means the verb will have to be singular. That means it ends in S. Helps does end in S, so A looks like the correct answer. Let's keep going, though. Nelson Mandela and his supporters. When you have two subjects joined by the word and, the verb will agree with, um, with both of them at once, so it must be plural. So we have two things here, and plus supporters is plural anyway. So that means a verb that does not end in S, but they use the word has, that does end in S, so that's wrong. This should be have transformed. Uh, C. Neither the losers nor the victor were dissatisfied. Um, when you use the word nor, two subjects joined by nor, it's just like or. The verb will agree with the subject closest to it. Here we have losers, which is plural, and victor, which is singular, and the verb is were. This verb will agree with the word the victor because the victor is closer to it. Victor is singular, so that means a verb that ends in s. Word doesn't end in s. This should be was. Neither the losers nor the victor was dissatisfied. And then d. Same thing. We have neither nor, but both, the, these, both of these things, the dolphins and the porpoises, these are plural. So we want a subject, uh, this subject is plural, we want a verb that does not end in s. Well, if we go all the way over to here, is clearly ends in s. We want are. Neither dolphins nor porpoises are actually a fish. Or I suppose are actually fish is how I would say. So the answer here is A. Gary's cousins or his mother helps. Alright, so in the fourth set uh, we have Enrique. Enrique is one person and we can ignore what's in between the dashes here. This will not help us at all. So Enrique is a subject and they use the word don't. Don't is a contraction for do not. Do doesn't end in S. Enrique is singular, so that means we want a verb that does end in S. So this should be Enrique doesn't want to go on vacation this summer. B. Compassionate people doesn't want anyone to be homeless. Um, compassionate people, this is plural, people is more than one person. So that means a verb that does not end in S. Doesn't is a contraction for does not. So this is the one that ends in S. So we want do not. So the contraction we would want is don't. C. The soccer team is arguing among themselves about the color of the jerseys. All right, so the soccer team, this might seem like it's plural, uh, and uh, I mean rather singular, that this might be singular because it says the word team, and sometimes the team can be one, per one group. Uh, this is a collective noun. Well, if you keep reading the sentence, you'll see that the soccer team, we have a bunch of individuals arguing with each other. They're not really acting like a team with one purpose. It's not about how they all went to one place or all did the same activity. They're actually arguing among themselves. Um, this means that team here is a plural quantity, so we want a, a verb that does not end in S. This should be the soccer team are arguing among themselves. Um, D. 
doesn't Lin want to play Mahjong with us this afternoon? So this is a question, so you should be very suspicious about it. Um, in this case, the subject is Lin. Lin is singular, so that means we want a verb that ends in S. Does not or doesn't ends in S. Does ends in S. So doesn't is the contraction we want for our singular subject, Lin. So the answer here is D. Okay, so the fifth sentence here, we have the main event at the fair are the food contest. So this is just right out. Um, this is wrong. The main event is singular, so that means a verb that ends in S. They use the word R. R doesn't end in S. It should be the main event is uh, the food contest. Uh, B, uh, here's the biographies of Colin Powell. The biographies is the, um, is the subject of the sentence. Uh, it's plural, so that means we want here are. Here's is here is, so this can't work. It should be here are the biographies of Colin Powell. Um, C. Where are the CDs of Beethoven's Fifth and Ninth Symphonies? This is a question, which means the uh, subject here comes after the verb are. Uh, if this were a statement, you would say the CDs of uh, Beethoven's Fifth and Ninth Symphonies are uh, over there. So uh, CDs is plural, R is plural, C looks like the right choice. We know R is plural because it doesn't end in S. Uh, si uh, plural, uh, singular subjects end in S, so this is plural. The singular form is is. D, two-thirds of the pie we made for our cousins are gone. Uh, this one's wrong because uh, two-thirds is an expression of an amount. This is rule K, which should be in your notes. But anyway, an expression of amount is either singular or plural depending on what you're talking about. Pi is singular, so two-thirds of a singular quantity is singular. So this should be two-thirds is gone, because pi is, is singular. So the two-thirds we're talking about is a singular quantity. So this will be singular. So it should say is, because singular verbs end in S.